All right, Shalom, Shalom. Want to start off by giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem, the Clock of Dash. Want to say the double honors of the apostles and the bishop elders, the great millstone for teaching us his word and truth and sincerity, and for women well. And salutations to my fellow I came across the four corners of the globe, the elect. Lord, women, where some of those men and you women that also believe. Hey, I'm the brother Gabar Yahweh, Death from GMS, Hawaii, coming to you with another lesson. And it's, um, it was inspired by. This whole um, mess, uh, messianic Trump ordeal that's been happening in the last week or two. And um, I'm sure it's going to pick up even more steam as we get closer to these elections. And these, uh, uh, it's a well known fact that these um, uh, Christians, these evangelical Christians, these Edomites, and you so called blacks, Latinos, Native Americans that follow Trump, uh, you look at this man as a savior, and he's not a savior to. Any of us, you know, me and the brothers did a lesson. I think it was when, when me and the brother Kahan did a lesson Wednesday, and we were kind of touching on this subject. And there's a precept that says, um, "Curses, curses he that trusteth in man and make his flesh his arm, meaning his power." And that's what you are doing, because this man, he's a he, all he is a is a well orchestrated caricature. That's all he is. You know, um, I was watching a little bit of the RNC a couple of days ago. We had Amber Rose on here supporting this guy. You know, and these people do anything for a check and uh, fame. You had um, Hulk Hogan. This dude ripped his uh, this dude ripped his shirt off. Um. Uh, at at the uh, what do you call this shit? At the <laughs> at, at the RNC. You know, I'll play this, man. Look out! You know, I see all the real Americans. I think about how Donald Trump. His family was compromised. When I look out there and I see Donald Trump, I think about how his business was compromised. But what happened last week when they took a shot at my hero? And they tried to kill the next president of the United States. Enough was enough. And I said, let Trump Amelia run wild, brother. Let Trump Amelia rule again. Let Trump Amelia make America great again. Yeah, and that's because these people, again, these people, they're idolizing this dude. You know, they made, they made this dude into an idol. He's no God. All right? This dude is no God. He's not going to save America. This dude's a megalomaniac, a self absorbed, true narcissistic man. In, in, in his best form, you use this word narcissistic, you know, the, the nigga woman loves to throw this word around, but they don't even know what it means. Right? I might have spelled it wrong, so this is the word for narcissistic is having an excessive or erotic interest in oneself and one's physical appearance. And this dude is a, he, uh, is a, uh, is the epitome of this word, you know, vain, uh, uh, self loving self admire wrapped in oneself and when you watch this uh the rnc that's what it was about when certain speakers were kind of like veering away from talking about trump he would have his frown on his face but then when they start doing shit like like this nigga uh terry hawk hogan did at the rnc and other people too because it was nothing more than a pop of circumstance this dude supposedly this dude was shot in the air, you know, and they're making, they're running with this shit. And these people believe, which is true. The Lord was with this man. He didn't want this man to pass away from a bullet because this is Nero. He's going to be the guy that ushers in the MOTB here in America. Via those CBDCs. That's a major, uh, <clears throat> major prophecy. But he's no God. This man is no savior. All right. This fam, I was watching the RNC yesterday. His granddaughter was up in there. I think it was today. His granddaughter uh, said that she's like she's about seventeen or eighteen, talking about some people uh, aside of Grandpa Grandpa Trump that they don't see. You know, he gives them candy and soda. I was like, "What, bitch? You like eighteen years old? What the fuck? Giving you candy and soda?" But they gotta make this dude sound like the epitome of everything that is good and that is great with America and with Edomites, so-called white people. You know, just like two weeks ago. Maybe like three weeks ago, they were talking about 
how this dude's a felon and how, you know, this guy's going to get in the office and then out of nowhere, they staged this event that made it look like this dude really got saved from the jaws of death. Okay. And it was all, it's all an orchestrated, carefully orchestrated event from even him getting charged with criminal cases, being convicted, being found guilty, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, to him being almost assassinated, all this shit is a carefully skipped, scripted event. And we see it. That's why we've been bringing out, uh, uh, was it second Corinthians two and 11? I think it's I always used first Corinthians. Let me see first Corinthians two and 11. All right, because you can't be Second uh, Corinthians, Second Corinthians, you can't be beguiled by this man. He's a deceiver, he's a liar, and everything he does is is about deception. It's about lying. Second Corinthians two and eleven: Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices, and you can't be ignorant of this man's devices, and we see it. You know, we see we meaning. Those that are in the know, those that are woken up, those brothers are that are in this truth, and even women that are in this truth, sisters that are in this truth, we see that this man ain't gonna save nobody from nothing. In fact, this dude's gonna usher in the destruction of this place. All right, these European nations, they're gonna hate. They already hate America, but when this dude gets on that throne again, it's a wrap. It's a wrap. It's gonna be a complete. Rap. And it was all supposed to be a careful, uh, um, what do you call it? a careful uh, display, d a demolition of this country. But it ain't going to be so careful. This place is going to go all by violence. Really don't matter who's in office. But with this guy, come on, he's out of it. And this, this is the same thing he did with, he's no different than the Jesus Christ. When you type in Jesus Christ, right, you type in Jesus Christ. You get the same image. You see that? With that sun disc behind his head. The sun disc behind his head. All right? This Edomite. This is an idol. This is not. He, this guy that never existed. The Jesus that you're taught in the world, he never existed. Yahweh Shai existed. You know? This man. He exists. He exists. Right? So-called black man with white woolly hair. This is not him, but this is like a close, closer description of what's in the scriptures than what you see uh, with that Jesus Christ shit. All right? And he didn't die for the whole world. He didn't die for no damn Edomites. He didn't die so that uh, Trump, he, he didn't die and was resurrected so that Trump could be uh, exalted in this world. You know? Like this so-called slacking. The so-called white savior. And that's all he is. All right? You got this chick, uh, Marjorie Green. Uh, she's a, I think she's a senator. Another Edomite, uh, uh, a psychotic, racist Edomite. So Marjorie Taylor Green compares Trump to Jesus Christ, claims both convicted felons. Right? Re uh, Representative Marjorie Taylor Green uh, on Monday claimed recently, well, she's a representative, Claim recent treatment of former President Donald Trump is comparable to that of Jesus Christ. So they look at this dude as a savior. This dude right here, this man, this man, this sick man. The comment came as Representative Green addressed the crowd at a Trump rally in Las Vegas, Nevada, invoking Trump's own rhetoric. The representative condemned the fake news media and its coverage of the former president's felony conviction. Mind you, this is like a couple of weeks ago. This shit happened, this was in June. We we in July, you know what I'm saying? Maybe a month, a little month ago, right? It says the Democratic and the fake news media want to constantly talk about, oh, President Trump is a convicted felon. Well, guess what? How many other convicted felons you know can run for presidency? You can run, but you ain't finna get up in there. You ain't gonna get backed by millions of dollars, billions of dollars. That's not gonna happen. And you know this dude's a criminal. Not only in the eyes of men, but definitely in the eyes of the Lord. This dude's a this dude. All these are all these are all criminals, man. Right, right? But they 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 he went from being ostracized to being deified in little than little more than a month. You see how things changed, right? So she compared this dude to Jesus Christ. 
She says that um, the Democrats and fake news media want to constantly talk about, oh, President Trump is a convicted felon. She said the conviction, she argued, should make no difference in the eyes of Christians across the country as Jesus Christ faced what she described as similar treatment. No, he didn't. Yahweh Shai didn't. His treatment was way worse. Trump ain't, Trump wasn't drugged in front of uh, his people, uh, spat on, beat, punched, kicked, right? Uh, um, defamed, dehumanized, and he had to carry a cross on his shoulder. Trump wasn't Trump wasn't um, a crucified on a cross. They use his proverbial speech, but this nigga ain't never, and he could never, would never be able to withstand something like that. He says, well, you want to know something, Representative Green asked, pointing two fingers toward the sky. The man that I worship is also a convicted felon, and he was murdered on a Roman cross. I'll play what she said. The Democrats and the fake news media want to constantly talk about, oh, President Trump is a convicted felon. Well, you want to know something? The man that I worship is also a convicted felon. And he was murdered on a Roman cross. The you see? So they compare this dude to Yahweh Shai. Well, she taught, she, she, the one she worshiped is Jesus Christ. And you got people worshiping this dude. This dude's an idol. He's nothing. Right? And that white, uh, I was reading this article right here about um, the white savior in movies. Right? As Michael Orr sues over the blind side portrayal and financial discrepancies, we dissect five continuous examples of white savior narrative that challenges Hollywood's representation of racial dynamics. And in this article, it was speaking about how um, that the uh, the so-called uh, what do you call it uh, white savior is not only in affects people in movies and media, right? But it's in everything, and that's all it is. You know, this dude is no God. He's no savior. He ain't going to be able to save his ass when this shit go down. Right? This is the book of Ezekiel 28. Salak, <sighs> yeah. Uh, this is the book of uh, Ezekiel 28 and 8. It says, and I'm sorry. I'm sorry, 28 and um, I'll start at 6. Therefore, thus saith the Lord Yahweh, Vashim Yahweh Shai. Because thou hast set thine heart as the heart of the Most High, and that's what Esau has done, right? He's compared himself as as if he's the Most High. In the NLT it says, therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord Yahweh says: because you think you are as a you are as wise as the, as the Most High, or as as a God. Behold, therefore I will bring strangers upon thee, and the terrible of the nations. And they shall draw their swords against the beauty of thy wisdom, and they shall defile thy brightness. They shall bring thee down to the pit, and thou shalt die the deaths of them that are slain in the midst of the seas. Without saying uh, before him that slayeth thee, I am I am God, but thou shalt be a man and no God. And in the hand of him that slayeth thee, thou shalt die the deaths of the uncircumcised by the hand of strangers. For I have spoken and said the Lord power Yahweh, right? And this was speaking to the king of Tyree. But the modern day king of Tyree today is starting with the super elite Esau Edom. But then you, we're looking at the head, the, the former to future head uh, of America again. These men, this man really believes that he's a God. He's a power. But he's, he's nothing more than a man. He's nothing more than, this man couldn't save himself if he was in a wet paper bag. With his hands tied. He couldn't do it. You know? This guy is 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 nothing more than a, a, a idol that is being presented to the people and the people are eating it up. They claim that this dude got shot in the air. You know what I'm saying? They claim that this guy is he was talking about some there was so much blood. There was so much blood over exaggerating his whole situation. Right? Over exaggerating himself to put to push himself into the hearts or the minds of the people. Right. So right here it says cinema is a powerful medium that reflects and influences society's perception and narrative. However, not all portrayals 
on the silver screen are laudable and some can be problematic. One occurring trope is the white savior, where white characters take center stage to rescue or uplift marginalized communities, often reducing the agency and depth of those they aim to help. The 2009 film The Blind Side has recently come under fire after Michael Orr, the former NFL player whose life was based on this film, filed a lawsuit alleging that Sean and Lee Adams, Tui, deceived him into signing con uh, conservatorship documents that he thought were his adoption papers, right? Others also claim that the Tuis, including their two biological children, each received $225,000 and 2.5% of the film's defined net proceeds. He maintained that the Tuis collectively received millions of dollars while he received nothing. Regarding the lawsuit, or is seeking the termination of the Tuis conservatorship, or aims to uh, prohibit the family from utilizing his name and likeness, generating profits from his narrative and pursuing both unspecified compensatory punitive damage because that's what they do. These people, they create this trope around you, Jakes, and they, they act like they're your savior. Like they're the ones that can save you from your ill fate that you're you currently in. Right? But this man can't save you. He won't save you. He only won't use you. Right? He's going to use you he going to exploit you. And if he can't do that no more, guess what? He's going to get rid of you. It says, considering the new development we are de uh, delving into, it says, into five eye-rolling examples of white savior mo movies that have garnered criticism for portraying racial dynamics and social issues. You got The Blind Side. You got Dangerous Minds. Stars Michelle Pfeiffer as a white teacher assigned to a, a teacher group of troubled inner city students. While it attempts to address educational inequality and social challenges, it's been criticized for framing a white teacher as the only hope for the student's redemption. Nonetheless, the film was a box office smash. And of course, because white folks love to see themselves as God. They love to see themselves as the Savior. That's why anything that has to do with anything that's great, Esau paints himself in that image. Right? And that's blasphemy. Right? This is the book of uh, Job 9.24. Job 9 and 24. I'm sorry. Job 9. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. He covered the faces of the judges thereof. If not, where and who is it? And that's what that's what Esau has done. He's covered the faces of the judges thereof. Right? He's he's he says he's God. He's 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 the Savior. He's the Son of the Most High. He's the Israelites. He's Moses. He's He's Joshua. He's Caleb. He's everybody except Esau. He's Jacob. He's Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. White people. Why? And it's it's all it's all a hypocrisy, because these people don't even believe in the Lord. They don't believe in His Word. They don't uh, they don't fear Him. Right? It says what? I think it's Psalms. Let me see. I might get this. Time. Psalms ten and one. Oh. Yep. Um, Yep, Psalms 10 and 4. The wicked through the pride of his countenance will not seek after the Most High. The Most High is not, uh, not at all in his thoughts. See, this is the wicked. Right? They don't think about anything the Lord has to say. It says the wicked are too proud to seek the Most High. They seem to think that the Most High is dead. And this is the reason why they do the things that they do. They make the comparisons that they do. Because they don't know the Heavenly Father. They don't know His Son. And you can worship this imaginary character named Jesus all you want, but it ain't going to help you and it's not going to serve you when all hell breaks loose, when the Lord's wrath is placed upon this place. And these people, these politicians are good liars, extremely good liars. Not even good in the fact that they're good, that their lies are so great is that they really know how to deceive the simple, right? And they believe you. I saw, um, I don't know where I saw that, but um, I saw this um, thumbnail and uh, one of Trump's old advisors was he was speaking about, you know, how much of a liar this dude is. You know, this dude, he lies like it's no tomorrow. Right. He lies like it's going out of style. You know, and you people, you Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, you fall head first for this white savior. Right. You, you love it. 
You got the movie The Help, set against a civil rights movement backdrop. The Help explores the relationship between black maids and their white employers in Jackson, Mississippi. While it received acclaim for its performances, especially Viola Davis, it was also criticized for centering the white characters as they, as the catalyst for change, overshadowing the voices and the struggle of black women in the film. Octavia Spencer earned an Oscar for Best Supporting Actress as many. Yeah, you see, and these, and when you look at all of these so-called Negroes, most of the time they get they get these awards. It's always it's always playing a subservient role, even if it's a violent role. You Jakes don't get. They don't give you Jakes, your Denzel Washingtons, Holly Berry's, Octavia Spencer's, uh, what's that, Monique's. They ain't give y'all no award for your, for deep, uh, acting skills, right? They always give you a role for playing a stereotypical Negro. They even gave it to that Hamite, uh, that played in that movie, uh, 12 Years a Slave, playing the role of, of, of a, of a oppressed individual, right? Yeah, and what made me think about this is I recently saw this movie right here called um, Freedom Writers, right? And it says, in Freedom Writers, how Hillary Swank was a teacher who inspired her racially diverse students, which included R&B singer Mario, through the power of writing. Despite its intention to address social issues, the film has been criticized for prioritizing the white teacher's journey over her students, right? And then they, in a the movie, they bring a so-called Jew up in there. They take the kids to a, a, a Jewish museum to look at somebody else's oppression as if your oppression is not worse than theirs or what you're experiencing. You know? Again, white, the white man's always God. He's always the savior. But ain't, they ain't, he's not. He's no God. He's no savior. Uh, it's not, this is some more, right? So this is, uh, second Thessalonians two and one. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord, Yahweh Mashiach, and by our gathering together unto him. It says, That ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as the day of the Lord is at hand. Right, so don't be scared or worried about the times, the uneasy times that we're in. It says, in the NLT it says, Don't be so easily shaken or alarmed by those who say that the day of the Lord has already begun. Yeah, because People who were saying that in the in ancient world, they even say it now. Like, it's already over. Don't worry about it. Nah, man, the Lord's coming back. Don't believe them, even if they claim to have had spiritual visions and revelations or a letter supposedly from us, right? It says, let no man deceive you because you had Jake's lion claiming that the Lord had already come and that, you know, like, like Jake missed the train, right? But it, it, certain things had to happen. Prophecy had to happen. Hey, this man right here, he had to be raised back up, right? And and so that he could be thrown down, right? So things had to happen. So let me keep on reading. It says, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, which we did. We fell away from our nationality, our history, our culture, our God. And we fell away from who we were. Because back then, all the Israelites pretty much knew who they were. I mean, you got Israelites scattered amongst the Greek, the known Greek and Roman world and other nations. But for the most part, you know, we had an understanding that we were the Israelites. At every captivity, we knew we were the Israelites, without a doubt. It wasn't until we got into this one right here that we it was totally taken away from us. So that had to happen first. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Right. Who's the man of sin? Esau Edom. So he can't be no God. Right? The wages of sin is death. This man, his kingdom is about to be destroyed. His, he's about to be destroyed. All of these low-level Edomites here in America and abroad, they're gonna be, they're gonna be swept away. What I'm talking about here in America first. They're gonna be swept away, right? They're gonna be out of here, right? They're not getting away, right? Except for the super elite who are gonna be put in those bunkers so that they can be the first fruits of captivity. All right? So let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except it come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, right? Because during Paul's time, uh, he wasn't revealed yet. You know, he wasn't, you know, these people were still in power. You had, you had the Herodian dynasty ruling over Jake. You had Roman, Edomites, Greeks, and all of that. 
But now he's being revealed in this time that we're in. Who opposed it? And this is a sign that to know who this man is. This man would what? Be a person who opposes and exalted himself above all that is called the Heavenly Father. And that's Esau Edom, that's a so-called white man. Or that is worship, so that he, as God, sitteth in a temple of God, showing himself that he is God. And that's Esau Edom. Nobody else did that. He will exalt himself and defy everything that people call God and every object of worship. He will even sit in a temple of the Most High, claiming that he himself is God. Right? And that's, what, that's what's happening now. Right? That's, that's what's happening. It's been happening. Since since Serapis Christus, but even more so in this time that we're in with this character called Jesus Christ, right? It's always it, this for all our lives. This image, the so-called white, this nigga like Rod Stewart, the so-called white image, and this dude's image always change, right? He'll look like Cesare Borgia one day, then he'll look like Rod Stewart the next, then he'll look like the dude from the Bee Gees, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then they'll make him look like a Jake, but he got dreadlocks. Or well, you got a head covered, just bugged out looking. This is more closer than, to the real Yahweh Shah than this shit is. This shit is, uh, this shit is out of order. And we were taught all our lives, our grandmothers, our grandfathers, our mothers, our fathers, us, we were taught that the one you even called God in Jesus Christ was this character. And he's, he, he, this cat, this guy, he accepts people that are like this, right? He, he exalts, um, um, evil and wickedness. Right? This guy. This motherfucker that was hanging over. You go to any so-called Puerto Rican, Mexican, Latino, Native American house, even Negro house. You're going to see this image right here. This image right here. And they cars all over the place. These people really believe that. And so through white supremacy, right, they they pushed this religion of Christianity. And that, that, that religion was set to do nothing but exploit and lie to you. And so this dude sits and says, he said he's God. If you type in, if you type in God, right, images of God, which no man has seen the most high with bodily eyes, right? Nah. Right? Yeah. They always make him out to be a so-called white man, right? He's always a so-called white man, right? These heathens, they got their idols too. But we're talking about the one they, the world ignorant calls God and Jesus. Let's type that in, God and Jesus. Right? That's this man. Look, 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 look at this shit. Look at this shit, right? All these images that depict the world, the one the world that calls God and Jesus Christ are, are white people, so-called white people, bro. Here it is. These are the same people that brought you nothing but hell on this earth. It continued to until this day. And even through their policies, through their religion, through their politics, right? They bring nothing but destruction to people. But yet, this guy is the image. So this is what, this is what Paul was speaking about. We supposed to think that heaven looks like this. Some Edomites just hanging around you. Right? You know, no fringes on their clothes, no borders of blue. Right? No gray hair, just no white hair. Right? Just Edomite pale skin. Right? Look at this shit. So somebody, this, this came out of somebody's mind. This ain't reality. I'm confused about Jesus being God. My understanding is that the Mormons teach that blah, 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 which that's another, that's part of Christianity. They say Jesus is God. Yahweh Shah is a power. He is a, a, a God, but he's not the most high. Right? If they're two distinct individuals. They look just alike because it's father and son. But they ain't, they're not, they're not so-called white people. But this is the image that they push, these Mormon issue images, these uh, Jehovah Witness images. There's always a so-called white man. Now, now, you got pictures of people making, you know, the one who they even call Jesus and God, or God and Jesus, um, um, you know, looking like so-called black people or Middle Eastern people, right? But those pictures are few and far in between when you're looking for, whether that be historical images um, or paintings, right? They're all these Renaissance images, you see? All these Renaissance images. And this is not true. All this is is white supremacy. And this man is being revealed. Let's go back to 2 Thessalonians. It says, um, verse 4, Who opposeth all and exalts himself above all that is called the Most High, or that is worship, so that he, as the Most High, sitteth in the temple of the Most High, showing himself that he is the Most High, and we are the temple of the Most High. Right? 
So this man, he sits in the minds of the people. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. And now ye know with holding that he might be revealed in his time. And we're in that time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken away. And because during that time, the mystery of iniquity was in power. It says, for, the, for this lawlessness is already at work secretly. And it will remain secret until the one who is holding it back steps away. Right? And that's how Bashi was shot. And, the, and, and then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him, this is the, this is more signs of who this man is. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan. And that's what Esau, all his works is after the working of Satan. Starting from the super elite on down. It's all Satanism. Who's coming, who's working is after the uh, uh, working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. Let's read that in NLT. Okay. It says, this man will come to do the work of Satan with counterfeit power and signs and miracles. That, that MOTB, that's a counterfeit power. Signs and miracles. They're using that chip to help people walk. They're using that chip to help people move shit. Tell, uh, so-called tele telepathically. And all this other weirdo shit, talk, see, right? Those are all counterfeit. It's a counterfeit power. And his, this man, he comes to do, he, he don't, this man is not coming to do the work of Yahweh Bashanel Mashah. He's coming to do the work of Satan. That's why he's always tossing that six in the air, that, that minor corruptor. Uh, he always doing that, uh, that, that vagina salute. You know, he always got it. He's always showing it because his allegiance is to Satan. It's, no, it's to nobody else, right? That's what these does. This dude don't have had he don't have no allegiance to the how about shine on the side. Right? And what with and with it says, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And this is two thirds of our people. They believe this man. And they've been deceived extremely. Right? And because of that, they didn't want to accept the love of this truth where they might be saved, they're gonna be destroyed. And for this cause, the most high will send them strong delusion. That they should believe a lie. This man, Christianity, your, your political system, this is all a fucking lie, bro. It's all a, a big ass lie, man. An extreme lie. Okay? There's no truth in this shit. Okay? It says, um, and for this cause, the most I should send him strong delusion that they shall believe a lie that they that they all might be damned who believe not the truth but have pleasure in unrighteousness man and that's two thirds you jakes you got uh this chip right here amber rose at the rnc she started talking talking about how her dad made her hate trump he said he was a racist but she grew up in a in a in a, in a diverse household like this chick, always wanted to see what the hell this tattoo said when I hit. What is Amber tattoo? I'm gonna really say it on. I actually seen this bitch in real life too. It wasn't that I, she wasn't nothing um, to be astonished at, man. And she was trying to hide her fucking face, right? So on her forehead, it says uh. Bash, hash, Amber Rose tattoo forehead family outing, defending out outing after defending shock ink, and that's all it is. It's some shit to make draw attention to her. This chick is an attention slut, attention whore. You know, she's a she's an individual who loves the attention of all types of people because it garners her fame and keeps her in the eye, the public eye, right? I'm trying to see what does it say, right? I can't really see the shit. I don't, whoever wrote this shit, it's off anyway. Because the bitch ain't supposed to have no tattoo. She got this shit on her fucking forehead. Right? She got all kinds of tattoos on her fucking head. This bitch is a fucking maniac. This is a fucking maniac. And they had this bitch at the RNC, bro. They had this bitch at the RNC. 
right? And what was she talking about? She was praising Donald Trump. This bitch is famous for doing absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. But people believe her. People look at this person and they say, oh, that's Amber I want to be just like her. But this bitch is nothing more than a witch, a warlock, a sellout, a witch. That's all she is, man. And she's there to, she's a part of the trickery, man. Okay? This is, uh, So like, I'm just looking for something. Yep. Because you got people that trust you in men. Matter of fact, um, just bear with me. Con, this is uh, Jeremiah 17 and 5. Thus said the Lord, how about she not a shot? Curse be the man that trusted in men and make it flesh his arm and whose heart departed from the Lord. For he shall be like the heat in the desert it shall not see when good cometh, but shall inhabit it the, par the parched places in the wilderness, in a salt land, and not inhabit it. Right? So, you jakes that you, you trusted this man, you're going to be destroyed with this man. Because you made this man your arm. Your arm is a symbol of power. Right? So, curse be that man that trusted in man and make it flesh his arm, and whose heart departed from the Lord. When you worship this dude, your heart got to depart from the Lord, right? This first of all, you worship an idol, a, a, a man, and you got to get all of them. You know, you're doing stupid shit like this, tattooing yourself up, you know, being a fucking slut whore. And you don't even, you're not even ashamed of the shit, right? But she'll get shame fits for Esau. She'll cover them tattoos on all of her arms for Esau. Put the black on, the turtleneck on. She'll put the vagina sign up. Smile hard as shit. You know? For Esau, but she's gonna be she's gonna be destroyed, right along with Esau. And when all hell break loose, Donald Trump ain't putting this bitch on the plane to save her ass. Hell no, nah, bitch, he, he done. You want she gonna burn right up right here in America, bro? Her son, her her son's father, her kids, all they all gonna die. All them people are slaughtered for death. Them niggas ain't right. It says, um, verse seven, blessed is the man that trusted in the Lord. The how about she was shot? And whose hope is in, whose hope Yahweh Bashim Yahweh is. And that's us. Our hope is Yahweh Bashim Yahweh It ain't Esau. It ain't nobody named Jesus Christ. It ain't no, uh, it ain't Allah, Buddha. It ain't Trump. It ain't this nigga. Our, my, our, our hope is in Yahweh Bashim Yahweh All right? So, and we're going to be blessed for that. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters and that spread of out her roots. By the river, you shall not see when he cometh, but her, but her leaf shall be green, and shall not be, and shall not be careful in the year of drought. Neither shall cease from yielding fruit. The heart is deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked. Who can know it? That's right, man. You see, so we put our hope and trust in Yahweh Bashi Yahweh Shai, not men, because this man is no god. He ain't gonna save you. He's not gonna be able to save himself. He's not gonna be able to save his country. Right, y'all put y'all trust in all of these old everybody making a big deal about uh sleepy Joe, creepy Joe Biden being old, but this nigga's old too. The fuck this old nigga gonna do for you? How's he gonna help you? And when I say you are talking about you so called Negroes and Latinos and Native Americans, how's how's his policies gonna help you? How's his how, how how's his laws that he's creating? Yeah, this nigga said when he get in office, man, if you an immigrant, pack your bags, yo. They coming. They can't, they, that's what he said. He gonna get rid of all, and when they say all illegal immigrants, they really talking about you jakes that's up here. They ain't mention nothing about the Moabites, the Edomites, and the Elamites, Ammonites, right? You Hamites gonna get thrown out too. But, but, uh, he mainly talking about jakes, man. When they talk about, you think about immigration, the first face you see, a uh, legal immigrant. Let me type that up more here, legal immigrant. An illegal immigrant, right? First, the first, uh, yep, dissecting the, the immigration chart, Trump says saved his life, right? It says, uh, Trump displays life saving illegal immigrants chart, says never, says never examined it. Matter of fact, let me see what this is. Right? So, I just want to look at the image. 
What who, whose face you see? The first face you see for so called illegal immigrants are Jake's from the Northern Kingdom. Look at this. <laughs> you ain't see white people. You ain't see Hamites. You ain't see Chinese people. You seen Jake's man. Spanish speaking Israelites from Central and South America. Biden, please let us in. Remember, because Biden opened up them gates and all hell started breaking loose. Look at this. All I typed in was Im illegal immigrants. I didn't type in illegal immigrants. I typed in illegal immigrants. And the first thing you saw was Jake. Jake, Israelites, man. Israelites. Right? Israelites screaming and crying to get over here, man. And then stay over here. Right? This man, and he, he wants to take you out, man. It says, dissecting the immigration Trump uh, chart, Trump says, saved his life. It says, let, it says uh, during the former President Donald Trump's acceptance speech, Republican National Convention, he displayed a graph he described as a chart that saved my life. Right? He, and then he talked about God that saved his life, but then he says, the chart saved his life. It's the same chart that was displayed behind Trump when shots rang out during the attempted assassination. Trump claimed that the chart shows how his administration successfully controlled immigration at the southern border and how President Biden reversed some of the progress made during the presence, his presidency. Less than four years ago, I handed this administration the strongest border in American history. But you can see on a chart that saved my life, that was the chart that saved my life. As I said, I said, look at it. I'm proud of it. I think it's one of the greatest. It was done on border control. Border Patrol, one of the greatest charts I've ever seen, he said during his speech. He needs to just be rambling. It says, however, Trump didn't leave office until 2021, and his altered chart shows encounters were rising in the months after 20, uh, April 2020 through November presidential elections during his presidency. The claim that April saw the lowest rates of immigration is also false. In fact, it wasn't even the lowest point of the Trump administration, as Aaron Melanick, American Immigration Council Policy Director, pointed out. As the chart shows, the border was getting increasingly out of control in a month before the election in 2020. By December 2020, border apprehensions were the highest level since 1999. Right, you see? So it's all bullshit. It's all contrived bullshit. Right? But the only one that's going to listen is the elect, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, this dude, he ain't no God, man. He ain't no savior. This dude's a devil. Esau, Edom, he's a slanderer, he's an adversary to Yahweh Bashanel Shah and Yahweh Bashanel Shah's people. This man, is no, he, he ain't right, bro. He ain't no God, man. He'll never be a God, man. The Sam says, Shalom, I'm going to the next.